We're going to be looking tonight at Nehemiah and Ezra, the joint books. And we're going to have our brother Bobby Maharaj do our little devotional. Go ahead, brother. Good evening, family. Ezra Nehemiah records the time around 536 BC. We find the people of Israel living in exile in Babylon, a land ruled by the Persians. The exiles may have been wondering what would become of them. Their future must have looked very bleak. Chances of ever returning to their ancestral homeland must have seemed hopeless. Then in Ezra chapter one, we're introduced to the Persian king Cyrus who is moved by the Spirit of God to do his will, and to fulfill a prophecy, to return his people to their homeland. This action by the king reminds me of two scriptures. The first is in Proverbs 21.1. In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels towards all who please him. And the second scripture is Jeremiah 29.10. This is what the Lord says, when 70 years are completed, for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. In this second scripture, the set time has come. The exiles, by the king's decree, can return to their homeland. In chapter 7, we're introduced to Ezra, the servant of God, one of the exiles, an Israelite of the priestly order, a man brought up in the knowledge of God. This Ezra is moved by the Spirit of God and granted permission by the Persian king Artaxerxes to return with his people. Ezra, Hebrew for help or helper, is fitting a name for the person God uses to help rebuild the spiritual lives of the people, to basically help align their lives with the word of God. What's interesting to me is that we have this people returning back to God, and God sends them a helper, Ezra. Fast forward a few hundred years, and Jesus speaks of a helper in John 14, 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. The Holy Spirit today is our helper. He dwells in us, helps those who have turned away from the world and given their lives to Jesus. He helps us to know that we belong to God and helps us to do the will of the Father. God recognizes that we need help in doing his will. And in both instances, then and now, he makes that possible. At the same time, while the exiles are returning, Nehemiah comes into focus, a man in the inner circle of the king's court. Yet chapter one of Nehemiah reveals that his high position did not change who he was. Just like Esther and Daniel, he had deep concerns for the well-being of his people. He understood the power of prayer and confessing sin before a merciful and compassionate God. Nehemiah and Ezra are men of great faith, men who did not waver from what the word of God says and the need to act on it, in spite of opposition coming from all sides. Working together, they helped rebuild the temple, the Jerusalem wall, helped rebuild the broken lives of a people and rebuild the broken covenant with their God. The Israelites again begin to experience true joy, true peace, only after fulfilling the words of the law. I hope this summary of Ezra and Nehemiah was encouraging. Enjoy your discussions tonight. God bless and thank you. Thank you so much, Bobby. Much appreciated.